Hey guys, Kai the Adventure. <clears throat> Man, sorry about that. I don't know why that always happens. But what I do know is that I'm Kai the Adventure Guy and I love adventures. I'm so excited that we have made it to day three of camp. But before we continue the journey, you have to make sure you have your supplies. Like this here map. Your map is your guide to all things Three Crosses Kids Camp at Home. As you continue with the activities, be sure to put a star on the map showing where you've been and what you've completed. Complete as many as you can and send us a picture after day five for that super duper exclusive, man you just gotta have it, badge of goodness. And don't let any of those pesky squirrels mess you up. As an added bonus with your memory verses, if you complete every verse this week and send in your videos, your name will be entered to win a grand special prize which includes a Squishmallow! Not, not this one. This, this one's mine. Man, I love this thing. Way better than the pesky squirrels. Two lucky winners will be chosen at the end of camp. So keep up the great work. Now, since adventures are always more fun with friends, we have some Zoom meetings set up today so you can share your journey. Preschoolers and kindergartners, join us at 11 a.m. today. First through third grade, we are at noon, and fourth and fifth graders join us at 1 p.m. for the Zoom meeting. We will talk Bible, share together, and play a game, so don't miss it. The links can be found in your online curriculum that was emailed to you, so check it out. If you didn't get it, be sure to email kids at threecrosses.org so you don't miss out. We've also got an Instagram and Facebook Live happening at 3 p.m. today where you can witness Pastor Austin, Miss Pauline, and Annie eat whatever you all, you all created in our disgusting kitchen concoction. Whew, can't wait. Keep checking your emails because more adventures are coming, including a photo scavenger hunt that will end in some sweet, literally sweet, prizes. And be sure to invite all your friends to the Zoom celebration Friday night at 7 p.m. It is going to be amazing. Whew, so many adventures. What a journey. Time to keep things going as we head to Ranger Danger for day three. Where are you? Oh, hello boys and girls. Ranger Danger here. I'm in the deepest parts of the jungle looking for the elusive bird known only as the yellow-bellied sap sucker. Let me see if I can call it. <clears throat> ah! Ah! I'm an ornithologist in my spare time. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, Ranger Danger, you like watching birds? That's not very manly of you. But I tell you, that's where you're wrong, Junior Rangers. You're never too manly to look and admire God's beautiful creation. Caca! Caca! Oh. <laughs> it would appear you're uh, also not too manly to get pooped on by some of his creation. Well, that's uh, <clears throat> going to be hard to get out of the hat. Uh, anyways, day three, let's jump into worship. Okay, I hope you had fun yesterday and you're ready for another sweet time together praising Jesus' name. So stand to your feet and let's do this. As we move into a time of song and dance, let's remember that worshiping is all about loving God and loving his people with our actions. This is just one part of worshiping God, but it is a pretty awesome part. Now, before we get to it, let's pray. Abba, Father, thank you so much for this time. Thank you for what these songs remind us of. Just to look to your son in all things. We love you, and it's in your son's name we pray. Jesus Christ, amen. All right, grab your mom, grab your dad, grab your sister, your brother, whoever's in the house with you. Grab everyone. Here, let me help you for a second. Grandpa! Grandpa! Hurry up! It's time for worship. All right, let's get to it.
journeyed from town to town, telling people about the good news of Jesus Christ. He met another Christian and started traveling with him, too. One day they visited a town and saw a fortune-telling slave girl. Hank noticed that she was possessed by an evil spirit, and she became a hindrance to Hank and Silas, who were sharing about Jesus. She followed them daily, and Hank became so concerned for her that he cast out her demon. Well, this did not make her owners happy, because she made a lot of money for them telling fortunes. They grabbed Hank and Silas and brought them before a magistrate to be judged. Angry crowds turned against them and demanded they be beaten and thrown into prison. Do you think this defeated Hank and Silas? No. Even though they were stuck in a dark and scary prison, Hank remembered his days with the Charming family and all the songs they taught him. He began singing those songs now with Silas in prison. All of the other prisoners listened and were amazed. All of a sudden, there was an earthquake and all the prison doors flew open. The guard was so upset that he was going to kill himself rather than be punished for letting all the prisoners escape. But Hank reassured him that not one prisoner had left. The guard was so impressed by Hank and Silas's actions that he wanted to become a Christian too. Then they shared with the whole prison. The guard was so grateful that he took Hank and Silas home and tended their wounds. They told the guard's whole family about Jesus, and they were all baptized that very night. The next day, Hank and Silas were released from prison and set free. All right, pretty sure this thing is broken. I cannot read this map. I am nowhere where I'm supposed to be, pretty sure I'm completely lost. Has that ever happened to you? You have plans to go somewhere and everything seems to go wrong. Your plans get ruined, you're hot and hungry and upset and you've got a bad attitude. That easily could have happened for our guys in our story today, Hank and Silas. All of a sudden they're in prison. They were trying to do the right thing and bam, now they're in a prison cell. Seems like their plans got ruined. They easily could have just complained and been upset. Has that ever happened to you? Everything gets ruined and you just don't know what to do. Your family got lost. You've got a great destination and all you wanna do is get there and things just seem to get ruined. Well, I've got a little story for you about that. But first, let me take this thing off. So I remember one time that me and my dad were driving up to Tahoe to go hang out with our family. We were driving in our big Bronco. It has no air conditioning and we happened to have our two dogs, Daisy and Lily, in the back with us. There we are, driving along, music playing, windows down. We're having a great time. Everything is going according to plan. And then, bam, there it happens. We hit traffic 
And I'm not just talking like, ooh, we're barely moving. Guys, we're practically stopped. It is so hot out. Now we're sweating. The windows are down. I'm trying to get fresh air. I'm actually pouring water on the dog so they don't overheat. And now the car starts to overheat. If that has never happened to you, I can tell you it's not a good thing. Now, slowly but surely, our plans are unraveling. We're not making it to Tahoe quite when we thought we would. It's easy in those moments to suddenly get a bad attitude because things aren't going the way you planned. Now, for Hank and Silas, they could have looked at everything while being in prison and say, everything's gone wrong, laid down, pouted, complained, given up, things are hopeless. But that's not what they do at all. Instead, we see that they started to sing songs and give praise. And through those songs, some amazing things started to happen. It showed a lot about the true character of their hearts. And that's exactly what we're gonna see in our story about Paul today as it continues. The man Saul has been long forgotten. He is now Paul, and he is dedicated to living his life sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. We start to see people's lives be changed by a guy who used to hate anything that had anything to do with God. It's pretty amazing. I can't wait to find out what happens next, so let's go ahead and grab our Bibles. Ta-da, got it. All right, today we're in Acts chapter 16, starting in verse 16. It says, one day we were going to the place of prayer. This is a few people with Paul. It says, on the way there, we were met by a female slave. She had a spirit that helped her tell people what was going to happen. She earned a lot of money for her owners by doing this. This slave girl, unfortunately, was being used by an evil spirit to tell people's futures. But people would pay to hear it, and so her slave owners loved it. That's gonna be important as we continue to see what happens. She followed Paul and the rest of us around. She shouted, these men serve the most high God. They are telling you about how to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became upset. You see, she's telling the truth. They were serving the Most High God. They were changing people's lives. But you could imagine that having someone following you and shouting things at you would eventually get frustrating. And he says, as he turned around, he spoke to the evil spirit that was in her. He says, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that very moment, the spirit left the woman because we know that God has complete power over Satan and his demons. Her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, so they grabbed Paul and Silas. They dragged them to the marketplace to find the authorities. Her owners are upset because they've been using this evil spirit in her to get money, and now Paul and Silas have totally ruined that. They brought them to the judges. These men are Jews. They are making trouble in our city. They're suggesting practices that are going against Roman law. They can't accept or take part in. The crowd starts to join in and attack against Paul and Silas. Here, Paul and Silas were just trying to go about their business, do what they're supposed to do, and now they're being attacked, even though they've done nothing wrong and they totally don't deserve it. In the end, it says they were stripped, beaten, whipped without mercy, and thrown into prison. The jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. They do not want these guys to escape. All right, now in this moment, everything has changed. They had plans, they were going places, and now they are sitting stuck in prison. Let's be real, this is far worse than my traffic jam and the overheating car. So what do you think they do next? Do you think they pout and get angry? Do you think they complain and give up? Well, let's check it out. Verse 25 says, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. They were also singing hymns to God. The other prisoners were listening to them. They were far from complaining. Instead, they're turning to God. They're even praising him in this difficult moment. It says, suddenly there was a powerful earthquake. It shook the prison from top to bottom. All at once, the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains became loose. What? Do you guys understand what just happened? This is crazy. And Paul and Silas could have easily walked out of the prison at this moment. The jailer woke up. He saw that the prison doors were open. 
So he pulls out his sword and he's going to kill himself. He thought the prisoners had escaped. Don't harm yourself, Paul shouted. We're all here. So what's happening is Paul and Silas easily could have escaped in this moment, but they didn't. Now the prison guard is so blown away. He suddenly asks them, he says, what must I do to be saved? Because in this moment, he realizes that the God that Paul and Silas serve is the one true God. Let's see what, they, what happens. Verse 31, it says, believe in the Lord, then you and everyone living in your house will be saved. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and they spoke it to all the others in his house that night. At that hour of the night, the jailer took Paul and Silas and washed their wounds right away he and everyone who lived with him were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house. He set a meal in front of them and everyone who lived with him were filled with joy. They had become believers in God. Paul and Silas and their willingness to keep a good attitude when things went wrong were then used to not only save the jailer's life, but his entire family's life. They have all given their lives to the Lord and they were baptized. Timber! Guys, this is mind blowing. You see, just like Paul and Silas, we have a choice. Every time life sends us a curveball, when things just don't go the way we planned or hoped or wanted, you see, we can't control every situation, but we can control how we're going to respond to it. The great thing is, is sometimes these detours and unexpected events are what lead us to the greatest views on the journey. For Paul and Silas, this moment in prison, although unexpected and difficult, is a moment that allows them to share God's good news with the jailer and his entire family. Now for me and my dad, it wasn't quite as profound, but on the journey getting to Tahoe, those setbacks, the traffic, made for some great memories. Now I'm kind of curious what Backwoods Bob has to say about this because you know that at some point in time he has to have experience with things just not going the way he planned. <laughs> Bob here. You know scorpions are considered the plague of the desert with their venomous bite and pinchers. When people say them they say, ah! <laughs> but I say it's young. <laughs> Next time you're down my way, be sure to drop by. I've always got a pot of roadkill stew on. <laughs> How is it that he can sound so profound and yet I have no clue what he's talking about? But I do know that the truth we've learned today is so important for our lives that sometimes we might feel lost. Situations can feel really hard. I am sure for Paul and Silas, being thrown in prison felt rough. But just like them, we have this choice. They turned and chose to praise God in it and allow God to use that moment. And that's what we can do in our rough life situations. When things aren't going the way we hoped, God can still use them to do amazing things, which kind of reminds me about what's happening right now. You see, all year, our team has been preparing and planning for camp. Not this camp though, day camp and kids camp. Those things were our plans, but clearly God, God had some different plans in store. This sometimes staying home and all that has happened in the season, it's felt hard. But you know what? At the end of things, God is still using it all. We're still praising God together. Thanks, internet. We're still having camp, just this year, you're doing it at home with your families, which is actually pretty cool. So let's open up our hearts today, how God wants to use these changed up plans in our lives. Those moments when things just don't go the way we thought they should, the unexpected detours. Let's let him use that to do amazing things for you and your family. Let me pray for us. Dear God, thank you that you can use all things even when the situation might feel hopeless to us, when we might feel lost in the midst that you are always still working and you are always still with us. Be with each family today as they're opening their hearts more to your word that you would continue to grow in their hearts and teach them more about who you are. Use this time of all the mixed up plans for your glory. 
In your name I pray, amen. Guys, it's been great. Thanks again. God can use us even when we feel lost. Have you ever found yourself in a place you did not want to be? Even if you got there on your own, or maybe it was by mistake, it could have been a dark, scary place, maybe you're all by yourself, and you're just unsure of like, Lord, what are you doing? Where are you? Sometimes when we follow Jesus, it can be scary. And there will be times where we'll ask God, what are you doing? But he is with us and uses everything for his glory. Romans 8.28 says this, we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who follow him, who have been called to his purpose. And even when we do something bad, he's teaching us. And when we do something good, he's gonna use you. Scripture says, whether we eat or drink or whatever we do, we do it for the glory of God. And we see in Paul's story, he was thrown in jail. For telling people about Jesus? Yeah, probably not the place you'd wanna be, but that did not stop Paul from telling anyone about Jesus. He praised God's name, and in fact, he used it for an opportunity to tell everyone about Jesus, wherever he was. And the jailer and his whole house received Jesus as their savior. Isn't that crazy? Sometimes we feel lost, but no, we are found in Jesus, created to do his will for our life. No matter where God has you, praise his name. He's gonna use you for a purpose because you are his masterpiece created to bring the good news to everyone. Hey, uh, yeah, Jackson here. I think I uh, took a, a wrong turn. Yeah, yeah, I did. I have, I have no idea where I am, but look at this view. Like we've learned today from Paul and Silas, I'm gonna look at this detour as a good thing and choose not to be rattled. I've got my map and it'll help me get back on the right path. Out here, you need a good old fashioned map to help you go in the right direction. It could save your life. Stay safe. Now, I believe before we go to Ranger Danger, we actually need to head to Backwoods Bob once more because he has two winners to announce for today. I have been given the privilege to draw from the prize hat. Whichever one of you guys win, I hope you guys like road kill killed stew. <laughs> I'm just kidding with you. I like that way too much to share with you guys. So, the first one we have, the winner is Tristan Hung. Yeah! Oh, that's amazing. Now, it's, uh, two, right? Uh, one, 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 two, oh, right, 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 one more. <clears throat> well, the winner is Gracie McGibbony! <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Nice job! You guys will get your, your prizes shortly. Well, that's all the adventure we have for day three. Thank you for joining us at Camp at Home this week. Now you know the reminders. Follow the online curriculum, answer those discussion questions, and make those crafts. If you want to say your memory verse, submit it to kids at threecrosses.org before 7 p.m. tonight. And join us on Friday for our S'mores Camp celebration. See you tomorrow, and as always, stay dangerous.